In Creole Parametric, there are two main ways of using top-down design in conjunction with mechanisms. I am going to show you my preferred method, which is to have multiple skeletons assembled with mechanism connections. Let's take a look at how to do this. So I'm going to start out by creating a new assembly. I'll hit the new icon. Let's change the type to assembly, and I'll give it a name. And let's type in the common name. And then let's make sure I'm using my standard template. That's good. And I'll click the OK button. Now, normally with my assembly kicked off over here, I would use the create button to create a skeleton model. But for the sake of this demonstration, I am just going to assemble an existing skeleton. And the skeleton that I am assembling is going to represent the ground in my model. So let me use my filters just to get to the skeletons. Let me find the one that I want to use. I'll click the open button. And since I assembled a skeleton, it automatically re reordered it as the first component in my model, even ahead of my default datum planes. So this is good for the first one. Now I'm going to create a, another skeleton model for the rotors, for the main rotors, and one for the uh, aft rotors. So let's go to the create button. This time I'll actually create one. And let's call this AH64D rotor main. Skel. I always like to put skeleton in the name. I'm going to skip over entering the common name for now. Let's click the OK button and I'll use my standard start part. Let's click the OK button. And for this one, I have an option turned on for comp assemble start so that when I assemble a new component, it's attached to the end of my mouse. I'm just dropping it anywhere. And at this point, I have no constraints. So I'm just going to hit the check mark. I'm going to leave the component completely unconstrained. If I turn on my magnifier, you can see that there is an empty box next to it in the model tree, indicating that it is under constraint. Also, one other thing to note is that you have to have a certain config.pro option turned on in order to have multiple skeletons in the assembly. If you go to File, Options, and then Configuration Editor, the name of that option is down here, Multiple Skeletons Allowed. That has to be set to Yes. If it's set to No, then you won't be able to create multiple skeletons here. All right, let's cancel out of the options dialog box. I'm going to create one other skeleton for my aft rotors. So let's go to the create button. We're still on skeleton model. And let's rename this and I'll call it rotor aft. And click the OK button. And again, I'll use my standard start part. Let me just drop it anywhere and hit the check mark. So I've got my two other skeletons in here. Now I'm going to get the geometry that I need for them. And usually it's easiest just to open it up in its own separate window. And then at this point, you can start creating the different features that you want. For the sake of this demonstration, I am just going to import a step file. Let's go to get data and then import. And let me grab my step file here. And I'm going to bring in geometry. I don't need a log file. Let's click the OK button. And I will hit the check mark. And so there I have my import feature brought in here. Let me go to turn off the plane display. And just want to make sure I have an axis here that I can use later on. So this is good for my first skeleton. Let's go back to the assembly. And now I'm going to repeat the process for the aft skeleton. So I'll open it up in its own separate window. Again, normally I would just create features in here that I would need, but to save time and effort, I'm just going to bring in some step files to have the geometry. That's good for that one. Let's hit the check mark over here. And so now that I have geometry, let's go back to our helicopter. 
And again, these are not constrained right now. Now that I have geometry, I'm going to edit definition, and then I'm going to assemble these with mechanism connections. For the first one, I want a rotational degree of freedom. That corresponds to a pin connection. And in the placement tab right now, it wants me to select my axes that I want to align. Let me use my selection filter to make sure that I'm just picking axes. So I'll pick this axis here, this axis over there, and then to eliminate translation, let me select the relevant surfaces. And so now I have my connection in here. You can set joint axis limits, you could set maybe a regeneration value, but that's not necessary in this particular situation because this is going to rotate through 360 degrees. My connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark. And we're going to repeat the process with the second skeleton. I will select it, edit definition. Again, it's going to have a rotational degree of freedom, so that's going to be a pin connection. Might help if you display the component in its own separate window. Might help you zoom in on different things. So let's select a cylindrical surface there and then a cylindrical surface. I'm using cylindrical surfaces this time because I can. And let's select that surface and find a surface over here. And just like before, I don't have to apply any joint axis settings or regeneration value. Let's just hit the check mark in here. And now we have our assembly skeletons with mechanism connections. You can use the drag functionality to verify that it's moving the way that you want. And also we can add in motors in here in the mechanism mode. Applications, mechanism, and I will select a joint axis. Then from the mini toolbar, I can choose to create a motor. Let's define the angular velocity. For the profile, I will use constant. And for this one, let's say that it is revolving. I don't know, let's say that it is going through, I'll say 9,000 degrees per second, in other words, 100 rotations per second. I think that's right. Um, now let's hit the, uh, let's see, let's hit the enter key, and then we can change the name of it. This will be the main motor. Now let's do the same for the aft. Let me select the joint axis and then choose the motor icon. Let's define our angular velocity. And this one maybe is going to have a different one. Let's use a constant value of 6,000 degrees per second. Let me call this my aft motor. And hit the check mark. If we want to test the motion, we can create a new mechanism analysis. And let's change this from the type position to kinematic. Let's have it run for 10 seconds. Let's increase the frame rate. And I'll go to the motors tab and we'll just have both of the motors run from start to end. Hit the run button. And let's click the OK button out of there. Uh, I think there was something wrong with my first motor. Let's select it, edit definition, and profile details. Okay, yeah, everything looks fine here. Let's hit the check mark. Sometimes if it's playing so fast, then you might not even be able to see it move. So let's take a look at the playbacks. Hit the play button. And yes, indeed, there is something wrong with my first motor. Okay, I'm back. I'm not sure what was going wrong with that main motor. I just ended up recreating it and now it is running fine. So again, if you want to use top-down design in conjunction with mechanisms, you can use multiple skeletons and have those skeletons assembled with mechanism connections. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.